A young boy, at the age of about 16 or 17, his name is Thalaba, radiyallahu anhu. Thalaba, radiyallahu anhu, was one of the active youth in the time of the Prophet sallallahu who obeyed the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his heart was firm in the belief of the Qur'an, and he was completely convinced in the existence of Allah, and he anticipated and, and sacrificed everything to reach Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ once sent Sa'alaba on an errand, meaning he sent him to do something. And then Sa'alaba went. It only would have taken him half a day to complete this errand. When on his way, Sa'alaba was on his way back to the Prophet ﷺ, when he reached close to Medina and he was passing by a small village which was built of small tents. And then he heard one of the tents as though there was water being spilt inside, like a shower, as though there was someone bathing in there. Thalaba did not have the right to open that tent and to look who was inside of there. However, his lust, his hormones played up a bit at that time. And the shaitan deluded him into opening a tiny crack in that tent. And he looked inside and accidentally to his shock saw a naked woman bathing ah now the shaitan stop playing with his mind nobody can see you it is very you know quiet area you know just look and he peeked and he looked and then he remembered that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him. And then he will quote the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith Ali. The first look is for you, and the second look is against you. This young man, he remembered. And he said, oh my God. I sit next to the messenger of Allah, and he, I'm serving him, and this is what I do. And then he closed the tent and he screamed so loud that he said, What have I done? La ilaha illallah. And he said, I will never go back to the messenger of Allah because Allah is going to reveal to the messenger and Allah is going to expose my sin. And Rasulullah will never ever talk to me again. I cannot see him. I cannot look at him. I'm leaving the city and he left the city. You know, that is what I call life iman. If the sin doesn't hurt, if the sin doesn't really cause pain in the heart, and you don't rush back to Allah, then then something is wrong with us. This young man, he ran and he left the city. And he forgot all about returning back to the Prophet ﷺ, who was too scared. He did not want to hear anything because almost certain that there was a verse sent down in the name of Thalaba, he is a munafiq. <clears throat> so instead of going to the Prophet ﷺ, he ran away and he headed towards the cliffs. And he stayed up there. When he didn't return to the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet began to become worried. And he said, where is Thalaba? I hope nothing has happened to him. The next day came and Thalaba hadn't, hadn't returned. So he sent his companions outside to look for him. And when they went and they tried and they returned, they said, Ya Rasulullah, we don't know where he is. And they kept the search going for about a week. Until finally the Prophet ﷺ sent Abu Bakr and Umar for a special tasked to look for him and find him. He said, go, look out into the outskirts of Medina, into the cliffs and the hills, into the forests and in the trees, search every tent, ask anyone that you see, and search for Thalaba. I'm very worried about Thalaba. And so they went out, and it took them weeks to search for him, until finally they approached this village where they found a shepherd with his goats. And they approached him and said, Have you seen a young man? His descriptions are so and so. He is of this height. 
and his name is Thalaba. He said, Are you asking about the crying boy? They said, What crying boy? He said, The boy that weeps a lot. There is a young boy that sits up in those cliffs over there. Our village hears him every night crying. And we don't know what his matter is. Every day he comes down and he drinks a bit of milk from my goats. And then he would drag himself back up into the mountains. And they said, this is surely Thalaba. Umar ibn al-Khattab said, how tall is he? He said, he's that tall. He's perhaps that is the one. And then, shortly after, the young man came, looking down, tears on his cheek, very tired, very weak, can hardly move. And then he came to the man, and the man gave him some milk. And the little boy, the tears that was coming from his eyes, are filling the milk, or the container that had milk. And he's drinking mixed milk and tears together, and... Umar ibn Khattab came out of nowhere and he said, Ya Abdirrahman. And the young boy, he got shot and he threw the milk and he wants to run away and said, Rasulullah, asking about me. Allah must have spoke about me. I'm a munafiq, I cannot go back. So Umar said, no. Rasulullah wants to see you. Let's go. His clothes were, were torn apart. He was withered away. He was so skinny. There was a disease in his skin. And he was extremely sick. They thought that he was dying. So then they grabbed him. He tried to struggle and run away, but they chased him and caught him. And then they grabbed him. And he said, please, please, don't take me to the Prophet Don't take me to him. Don't take me to him. I'm too scared. They said, what is wrong with you? Take a hold of yourself, Ya Thalaba. He said, please don't take me to him. But I know why you are taking me to him. Allah has sent a verse down concerning me, hasn't he? He certainly has sent a verse down concerning me, hasn't he? He said, Ya Thalab, we don't know why the Prophet ﷺ is asking for you. Please come with us. He said, yes, I know why. I know why. They said, Wallahi, we have to take you to him. It is a commandment from the Prophet. And so they dragged him on his feet towards the Prophet ﷺ. And they placed him in his house. And they told him, Thalaba is at his home. So Umar said, Ya Rasulullah, the young boy is sick. And this is what's happening. Please, if you want, come and see him. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went with the young boy and he realized the young boy is ill. When the young boy saw the messenger of Allah and coming and approaching him, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm a sinner. Stay away from me. Don't come closer to me. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being mercy, because Allah said in the Quran, we only sent Ya Muhammad so you can be a mercy for all mankind. He picked the head of this young man and he sat him up and he put him again on his thigh. And the young boy is saying, Ya Rasulullah, I'm a filthy person. I committed ma'asiyah. Ya Rasulullah, don't touch me. You are the messenger of Allah, you pure. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comfort this young man. And the young man felt comfort with Rasulullah. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, are you hiding it from me? He said, what am I hiding? He said, Allah has sent down the verse concerning me that I am one of the hypocrites, hasn't he? The Prophet sallallahu looked at him and he was crying. And the Prophet sallallahu said to him, No, Ya Thalaba, Allah has not sent anything in your cause. And then he said, I am going to be punished, Ya Rasulullah. And then the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Ya Thalaba, what are you fearing? And he said, I fear that Allah is going to place me into the lowest place of hellfire. I did a great sin, Ya Rasulullah. And then the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Are you fearing the anger of Allah? He said, Yes. He said, A mu'min also has another belief, and that is hope. What do you hope for? What do you wish for? What do you yearn for? And he said, I hope for the mercy of Allah and His forgiveness. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, Then ask Allah with that which you are hoping for. And make your assumption about Allah good. You will find it. And then he made a dua. 
and the Prophet Sallallahu read on his head and made a dua for him. Then all of a sudden, Thalaba said, Ya Rasulullah, I feel as though there are thousands of ants crawling on my body. He said, can you really feel that? And he said, yes Ya Rasulullah. And I'm about to go unconscious. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, it is death. So say, La ilaha illallah. And then Thalaba began to repeat those words. He said, Say la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And he repeated those words until finally his soul escaped from his body. He was forgiven. But because, my dear brothers and sisters, he used the hope that he had with Allah.